There are a lot of different ways to program a radio station, and hopefully I'll beat that into you during this course over and over and over again. There's no one particular way. Some are very clever, the other ways, and some are very different. I'm going to tell you about a very different one, a very different approach that had huge success. And I would say that probably 99 to 100% of all PDs on the planet at the moment have no idea that you can do this. So let's get into it now. Hey, welcome back to Musicom Academy, everybody. How to be a PD, how to learn how to do it, and everything that goes along with it. Let me start out with this, and um, I think it may or may not be, depending on your viewpoint, controversial, but it's something that I have a core belief in, and I really, really think it's important, okay? I believe that there are different levels of programming, different levels, and that most people operate on the, on the normal level, the basic level. It's kind of like if you were a golfer, you know, in his prime, Tiger Woods was just playing on a totally different level than everybody else. Probably Tom Brady is on a different level than most quarterbacks. You know, Yo-Yo Man putting up against a fantastic violin player, Yo-Yo Man is just playing on a different level. He hears things, he sees things that are just different. He knows how to impact the audience, knows how to impact things that other people just, they just don't know about. That's what this particular lesson is going to be about. I'm going to tell you one way, one person that I know did this, and I was like stunned when I saw it. And I'll tell you the story of how I got up to it so you can understand it better, and then I will specifically explain it. And it's something that you can do for sure on a lot of different types of shows, Okay, a little harder to do on a radio station for the whole station, unless you're in a particular format, and then you absolutely can. Some formats you won't be able to do it, I guess what I'm trying to say. And uh, at the end, I'm going to give you some things that are in the similar vein that any format can do. Doesn't matter what your radio station, I don't care what format you are, you all can do it, even TV does it. So let me tell you what I mean by different levels. I think the normal basic level is you're using your hot clocks, you're using your music rotations, your production, your promotion, your contests, um, what the jocks say, how you approach the radio station, all of that. That's sort of the norm, you know, let's just call it the basics, although, you know, there's a lot of levels to that too. But then when you get into the upper levels, you leave that behind or you're using those basic pieces to play head games and manipulate your audience. You are manipulating their feelings. Okay, I know, I know that's like, ooh, that sounds not good. I don't mean it in a, you know, in, in any sort of malice or, you know, a bad way. You know, not like, say, what the social media companies are getting accused of now with their algorithms where, you know, Facebook and, and uh, Google and Twitter and those, you know, they're using algorithms to basically make you keep coming back to the to their venues, you know, as if, you know, you're like on crack or something like that. I don't mean that. I mean actually taking your audience and instilling feelings, deep feelings in them where they love you because they're getting enormous amount of enjoyment out of it, but they have no idea what's going on. And most people listening would have no idea what was going on. And I know that firsthand because when I found out about what I'm about to tell you, I had no idea what was going on. And I had listened to this person's show Okay, I had listened to this person's show for about six years and had no idea. And I'm a PD, you know, and I'm a you know, reasonably decent high level of a PD. And I kind of knew what I was doing, certainly. And I had no idea this was going on. And by quirk, pure accident, I got to find out. And what it was, it all centered around a guy who was doing a love song show. A, a show was called Pillow Talk and it was in Detroit. And the guy's name was Alan Allman. It's a couple of minutes in front of 8 o'clock, and I want to welcome you with open arms to the first hour of Alan Allman's Pillow Talk. WNIC Radio in Detroit, Michigan, at 21 minutes in front of the witching hour. This is old Uncle Alan Allman, and uh, we've got a surprise for you. We just had a call from Alpha Z Delta Sorority at the University of Michigan, and one of their young ladies up there in that sorority was just crowned the University of Michigan homecoming queen. Can we have a small round of applause for her? That's terrific. Congratulations, sweetheart. And uh, please keep listening and give me a call some night. Uh, hey, this is WNIC FM 100, and this is the song they wanted to hear for the homecoming queen. 
Joe Cocker and You Are So Beautiful to Me. And this is a song for you. When I was in a band in college, I used to play the flute part on this. This is Chicago. You've been listening to Pillow Talk. My name is Alan Almond, and it's The Witching Hour. That's about, uh, that's about going to wrap it up for a Friday night. Time to turn out the lights and say good night. For those of you in the lounge this evening, uh, save one for me. I love you so, so much. And, and sweet dreams, Angel. Let's get to know each other evenings on W. <laughs> See, I'm going to kill you. One more. Here we go. This is it. I've had it with this. You know what I mean? Are you ready? I'm sick of this shit. I hate TV. I hate TV, you know, okay. He was one of the very first people to do a Pillow Talk love songs type show, okay? And he was enormously successful. I mean, you got 40, 45 radio stations, you know, in Detroit at the time, and he, you know, he's pulling like 25, 30 shares at night, you know, doing 7 to midnight on a WNIC, which was an AC radio station. And I mean, part of the, there's different reasons, and you'll hear one is he had an enormously awesome voice, just a fantastic voice, and he had just a great demeanor, and he was just a really good air talent. So you know, that's a huge portion of it, absolutely. And the management there, I think Paul Christie at the time was the PD that started him doing it, and Ed Christian, who runs Saga, you know, the entire Saga chain, I think it's, Ed actually owns the Saga chain, although maybe it's public now, I can't remember. Anyway, Ed Christian, you know, huge radio guy, you know, like, Ed's like a radio encyclopedia for radio and absolutely knows radio. They had the foresight and the common sense to just allow Alan to do his own show. And what I mean by that was, you know, the music was programmed by Selector, but at 7 o'clock it stopped. From 7 to midnight, it was Alan's show. There was no music sheet. The computer didn't now handle anything. Alan was free form, and he did it his own way. Now, what ended up happening for me was, you know, I was working at the radio station at the time. Uh, you know, I had been a PD you know, a bunch of times, and I was just burned out as being a PD, and I just wanted to be a jock for a couple of years and, you know, just mellow out and get back to loving the business again, because I really soured on it, um, you know, fighting. I went through too many years of fighting the CRTC, you know, you know, and the rules, you know, for CKLW, and, and I was just burnt out. So I'm jocking. And Alan is doing a 7 to midnight, and he's got to go on vacation. You know, logically, the guy's got to take a vacation. So I got asked by the PD, Steve Goldstein, another great PD, really knows his stuff. Um, and, and Steve say, hey, would you do you know, the 7 to Midnight Show? And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. I'll fill in for Alan while he's gone. I think that'd be kind of fun. Because I loved listening to his show. And you know, I loved the music that he was playing. And it was just interesting the way he weaved things. And here's where it gets interesting. So I, I said, okay, well, so Alan you know, came in and I was there. And I said, oh, take me through the show, Alan. Um, you can explain, you know, what you're doing. Obviously, you're playing all love songs, all, you know, all slow songs. There's no upbeat stuff. It's all slow type things. And he had, you know, a few requests that he would do and some dedications that usually went along with the request. I mean, not unlike maybe Delilah, who does it now and has been doing it for years. Again, Alan was way before Delilah or any of the syndicated people now. Anyway... So he, he's, he's explaining the show, and, um, and then he points to the dots on, on the carts. Now, this is a cart machine, and you'll see a dot on here, big dots. He had little smaller dots from what you're looking at right now. And, you know, the cartridges in the, in the control room, each of them had songs, and they're, they're in big racks, and you'd spin the racks and grab a song. When I was doing a regular show, I'm using a lot of the same music, you know, the, the slower songs, in addition to using, you know, upbeat songs. And I, and I never really understood what the dots were, because, you know, like, say, half the library had dots on the cartridges. And I don't remember exactly the colors, but I'll, I'll just make this up for you, for you. So let's just say there's red dots, there are blue dots, and then there are green dots. Red, blue, green. Okay? Those are the dots that are on some of the songs, all the slow songs, essentially, all the songs that Alan would play. And I was like, well, so, you know, what do you, does, did these matter, Alan? What do, you, what do you do with these? He goes, oh, yeah, for sure they matter, absolutely. 
I weave a tapestry of what I'm talking about and I marry it to the music of what I'm playing and I make people go on an emotional roller coaster with the music. And I'm like, I don't quite understand what he's talking about because, you know, to me, listening, it was all the same music to me. It was slow songs and slow songs and slow songs and slow songs. And that was, you know, pretty much it. It was a pillow talk, love songs type show. Like, what is he actually talking about there? And then he explained it to me. Now, before I explain it, which will only take a second here, I just want to point out that this is something that I'm pretty sure this is just a guess on my part. I have no research to base this out other than talking to other guys. I don't think most guys would catch this because I don't think most guys listen to music the same as women do. Women listen to music in a different way, I believe, than, than guys do. I saw this initially with Rosalie Tromley, who was the music director of CKLW. She would get really excited about some songs and she'd start quoting and, and, and singing and spouting and yelling the lyrics of some, some particular songs. Like, oh, oh, I can't believe she sang that. Oh, oh my God, that hits home. And I'm like, I have no idea what she's, what she's talking about because I think women hear lyrics. Okay, so let's just assume that I'm 100% correct in that. Again, Alan's pulling 30 shares. Women hear lyrics better than guys. Let's just hold that thought. Let's go to the dots now. Okay, so this is what I do. Every time we start a set, I keep doing this. I do this the entire show. And what this is, is I play three red dots, which are, I'm crushed. My baby left me. I, I, I don't want to live. You know, my life is over. My baby left me. Three of those songs. Okay. Then I do a blue one, which is neutral, which has nothing to do with up or down. My baby didn't leave me, um, you know, or anything along those lines. It's just a nice slow song. It could have anything to do with anything. Then after I clear the palette of, oh my God, I'm crushed. I go into three super, I'm in love. And this is the wonder, most wonderful feeling on the planet. You know, I just found the girl of my dreams, those type of songs. So three, I'm crushed. One to clear the palate is if you're, you know, got ice cream and when you're tasting wine or something. And then three, I, I'm in heaven. Three bad, clear the palate, I'm in heaven. And that was the entire show. And I was sitting there going, oh my God. I, I, I was like stunned in that I had never thought that you could actually do that with lyrics. Again, being a guy, probably don't really hear the lyrics all that much. And yet that was an integral part of his show was the lyrics to the songs. So I pass that on to you knowing that you can do that. Since then, I've thought of other ways of using lyrics. Like I think you can use lyrics on other different formats for sure. Let me put it this way. If you were doing a love song show on your radio station, you have one, I'd be immediately be moving to that baby. Love songs, quiet storm, that kind of thing. Oh my God. Or if you have a sort of a Maybe, you know, the new thing is this, you know, slow, easygoing format now, like the breezes and that kind of stuff. You know, I'd really seriously consider doing that with one of your radio stations. I think you could do that too with country stations, maybe some other formats, but they, they didn't really super come to mind to me, but country for sure, because country, you know, country music has a lot of story songs, you know, they're really uplifting by the Dixie Chicks or Toby Keith or whatever, where, you know, your, your hair's starting to, you know, stand up on the, on the, you know, on, on your arm because they're really passionate and, you know, they're positive and all that stuff. I mean, you, you know, you want to capture that feeling and then like plow right into your, maybe your, your top ID and have that feeling immediately go into your ID and carry over into your radio station. That's what I'm talking about a higher level because when Alan Allman was doing, um, when he was doing these lyrics, he's working at a higher level. He's, he's taking, you know, you're deep in somebody's subconscious and, you know, and messing with them big time. You are manipulating them, their feelings, and they don't even know it. Uh, and I think that is the core of where great, great radio programming, you know, exists. It's the Tiger Woods over other people. It's a lawyer in a courtroom looking at a jury and little by little sort of changing their mind. 
it's that type of thing. It is manipulation in a good way to heighten their wonderful feelings for you. Now, what do you do if you don't have a love songs show or you don't have a, you know, an AC station or you, you know, you have, oh, how am I going to use that? Um, I can't use the lyric thing. Well, could you give me another example? Well, it's hard to give you a lot of examples because, you know, even I, and I kind of thought I was a pretty decent programmer, they're hard to come up with. Usually when you can think of one to do, they're not hard to execute. The hard part is actually thinking of, of, of something, you know, like Alan's thing. Once I took, you know, as I told you that about Alan doing the lyrics, you probably went, well, that's pretty obvious. Um, as great ideas usually are, you know, after the thought, <laughs> the hard part is thinking them up. So, you know, it's not like I was you know, some super, you know, Jedi radio guy that could think of these things on the spot. You know, I probably have only maybe thought of four or five, maybe six in my entire radio career um, because they're hard. But what I'm trying to still in you is there is a different level here. I want you to, you know, as you take this course or if you're programming right now to understand that there's another level up there, a bunch of other levels. And if you can, you want to be thinking of what can I do up in that, up in that level? What can I do to mess with people's minds up in that level beyond what I'm doing here? I'm doing this. Hey, is there any way I can tweak this and, you know, and move that, you know, up on top? That's what I'm trying to instill in you with this lesson more than anything, in addition to telling you about what Alan, Alan Allman did, which was pretty, pretty cool. So let me give you a really simple one that any radio station can do. And I'll tell you the story behind it. Um, after I retired, we decided to go to South America. Well, actually, we decided to see the world. So we spent a year in South America. And we were living in Uruguay and in Argentina. And, you know, at the time, not so much now, but at the time, I was like a golf channel. Of, you know, I was hooked on it. I loved golf and I loved the golf channel. So, um, you know, and they had the golf channel international version in Uruguay that I could see it and I would watch it all the time. And within about a week to two weeks, it sort of struck me like, you know what, this channel's kind of boring. It's not like the U.S. one, but yet it was the same shows. It was the exact same shows, but it, it didn't, it felt, you know, it felt weak. And I, and I was like, oh, well, that's weird, you know, and then Radio Guy takes over. And I started to figure out that it felt weak because they didn't change the promos. If you look at the Golf Channel in the United States, you know, or North America, they are continually throwing things at the audience. They change their promos like every seemingly every couple days. They're coming up with different shows where they take, you know, you know, something that maybe is done on regular television and they, they adapt it to golf in some way. And, and they're continually throwing new things at you. And I think that's really important because that is working on a different level. I believe that when the audience has a feel that you're a radio station that keeps coming for them like this. I want you, I want you, I want you. I got new stuff for you all the time. You feel it as an audience. The audience knows that you are active and you are coming for them and you know, and you want them, okay? So let me just throw some things out there that, that I think that right now with your radio station that you, know, you can do, you should do actually. Um, much like the Golf Channel and some other things. I'm going to bounce through unrelated things, but they are all related, unrelated in time. WABC in New York City was a huge monster radio station, probably the biggest radio station on the planet, most successful for many, many years. And once a year, every year, come September, just like television networks, they would start a new season. They would get an entirely new Pam's Jingle Package, and probably Pam's would work the entire year to have you know, the new jingle package for WABC in New York City, and they would unveil it, you know, with big, you know, big hoopla, and, you know, and they'd be playing the jingles for one year, and maybe it's music power, that's their thing this year. Next year, it's something else, you know, different sort of cell line type stuff. Um, and year after year, they would do that. So the station basically was sort of putting a new layer of paint on top of the radio station, you know, every 365 days, and, and it was noticeable. Now, let me jump to another thing. Um, I became PD of CKLW and my budget was $10,000 a year for promotion. That wasn't for the department, that was to give it away, get rid of it. I had to burn $10,000, you, know, uh, you know, in contest or something every month. 12 months, they had 12 $10,000 increments, which you know, nowadays is worth about, with inflation and stuff, it's worth about $33,000. So I'm burning $33,000 a month. 
And what that forces you to do is you have to come up with a different kind of contest every single month or promotion or something. So, you know, one month we're giving away two cars, the next month we're, you know, doing something, you know, really elaborate. You know, after that we're, you know, we're doing like $30,000 worth of groceries. It was a continual nonstop, make something up and come at the audience. But what the audience hears is every month you are coming for them. You're doing something unique. And, and, and you're active and you're alive. You're in a live radio station. And if anybody's wondering, they're going, yeah, this is the one I should be listening to, but this is the one that does all the cool stuff. Now, let me knock that down even more because you probably don't have $33,000 a month to give away. And let me just put it in really, really simple terms with just a, a simple question. And I'll tell you what I did when I was programming. Um, you know, I sort of had a minimum. Um, but let me just ask you this question. How often do you change your liners and your splitters, your, you know, your IDs in between songs and your promos about the radio station that are not contests? And maybe even the contest ones too. I mean, I've seen a ton of radio stations where they're going to give away something. They make two promos. They run them for three weeks, the same two promos over and over and over and over again, you know, until the contest is over. That's awful. That's brutal. I mean, you should sort of come out of the gate with like five, five promos about the contest, you know, and, you know, beat the crap out of them for like maybe the first week and then come back in with another five saying maybe similar type stuff, wording, uh, you know, you're just attacking it from a different, but there's different production, there's different everything, you know, and then maybe slow it down a little bit. So maybe it's every hour the first week, every other hour the second week, you know, every third hour, or maybe hold it at every other every other hour right for the duration of the contest, but you are continually changing the promos. That's my point. Same thing with IDs. What I used to do is I would sit down and I would write maybe 20 sweep IDs or splitters or whatever you want to call them. This, you know, the, the little IDs, the 10, 12 things, second things that are in between music, you know, during a sweep. I maybe write 20 of them and get 20 of them produced. And I take the first eight and I put them in and I pull eight out of what's already there. And I'd wait maybe four or five days and then I'd pull another eight out and take another eight and put them in. And I would be constantly doing that. So over the course of maybe a week and a half to two weeks, the, all, all of the splitter IDs, they would totally change. They would just disappear. And I'd maybe save them and maybe I'd bring some of them back because I thought they were cool. But I've just seen so many radio stations where they just put in splitters and IDs and nobody changes anything for like months. You know, I, I just went in recently, I won't say what station, but I went into, uh, you know, one radio station and I was helping out and I was, you know, looking at them and they had IDs, splitters and things and that nature they hadn't changed in two years. I mean, that's just brutal. So if you want to give this feeling to an audience, really simple terms, take all of your production and turn it over really quickly. Yeah, it's work. It's a pain in the butt. The production guy's probably going to want to put a gun to his head and go, ah, what are you doing to me? But it matters and you should do it. So <laughs> hopefully, let me pull that level all the way down here to, uh, to something really kind of basic and say goodbye. Hope you got something out of this. Hope you're enjoying the course as we go through. Uh, next week, I think we're going to go into hot clocks. Not 100% sure, but I think we're going to start uh, building hot clocks in little by little pieces so you really get the feel for it. Anyway, uh, make sure you subscribe, click the bell, do all the usual YouTube stuff that you need to do, and I hope you're enjoying it. Until the next time, see ya!